Hey guys, welcome back to the Butterfly Effect podcast. You are here for the final Until Dawn character rank listing. God, that was a mouthful. And uh, this week, uh, the third and final one is going to be Jack's list. So, Jack, you looking forward to doing this? I am indeed. Yep, I've uh, I've listened to yours. I've listened to Anya's. So now you're going to hear the best list of all, my list. <laughs> nice. I mean, just so you guys know, I'm yet to see Jack's list. This is going to be completely blind for me. So yeah, I mean, you just ready to get stuck into it, Jack? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So start from the bottom to the top. Let's see what you got. Okay, so a little bit of context before I get going. So I know that there's various ways that you really could do this list. It could be based on how well written you think the character is. It could be based on which characters you think you'd most likely hang out with in a real life situation. It could be a bit of both. Now, for my list personally, I've done it as in who I'd most likely hang out with the most and least. So starting from the bottom, I've put Josh. Uh, <laughs> three guesses why. So he pranks his friends to an extreme level. He makes them believe that they're in real jeopardy. He actually hits a couple of them as well, you know, namely Ashley and obviously Gas's Sam. And I know that we say that this is all because of his mental state. And you know what? There is some sympathy to that. However, this was like a year in the making. This was like a premeditated plan. And obviously when we first meet Josh in the game, it's not like we're all sat there saying, oh, he's off his meds, he's lost his mind. So, you know, there's definitely, he, def he definitely has a dark agenda against his friends and obviously that's not a quality that i'd want to have in a friend um so i don't know like obviously you can feel some sympathy because his friends have essentially got his sisters killed right and he's probably looking for someone to blame so you can go with that angle however the the whole the whole event takes place because of him, ultimately, where you know characters start getting killed. So I'm afraid Josh, not only does he die or become a Wendigo, but he's also at the bottom of my list as well. So that's a triple whammy for Josh. So number seven on this list, and I'm sorry, Anya, but it is Emily. So why, why is it Emily? Um, I was thinking back and I know that when we've been doing the podcast I've been saying you know what Emily's warming to me a little bit but I thought on that more and I think it's more because that she's in cool scenes rather than me liking her character you know she's in that awesome escape scene she's in that scene where you know she finds Beth's head and it's like one of the darker segments of the game but when I think about her character, the first thing I think of, and this could be, you know, partly on me, sort of seeing the negative, but I still think that she's a bit of a bitch and that she's kind of vain, she's dishonest because she goes and sneaks behind her boyfriend's back to meet Mike. We don't know if this is because she has a thing for Mike or whether it's perfectly innocent. But regardless, she does still use Matt in a way that I don't like. She gets him to carry the bags, but it's not even done in such a way that it comes across more um, more innocent. It's, it's as if she's controlling him. Um, so is she strong-willed? Yes. Is she confident? Yes. And these are all positive traits. But for me, she doesn't toe that line. And I think that she slips into more arrogance and selfishness whereas i feel like there's a female character that i'm going to discuss who's higher on this list who is still strong-willed and is confident but doesn't have those negative traits as well right okay number six so honestly this is the section 
for me, the next sort of few characters, they're fairly interchangeable. It's hard to place them. And this, so for me, number six is Jess. And this is kind of bias on my part because in my playthrough, I didn't, she wasn't in the game that much. She was up at the lodge with Mike. Um, obviously she falls down the chasm and then before you know it, she's getting her throat sort of ripped out or a jaw ripped out from a Wendigo. So all I really saw of her was almost like being similar to Emily, kind of bitchy, sassy, but where she pips Emily for me is she does have that slightly redemptive arc when she's alone with Mike in the lodge and she's saying, you know what, I'm actually a lot more shy than you know what people think. And when she's with Matt and she's gone through his trauma, she is naturally more down to earth and likable. So that's why I think she pips Emily for me. So number five is Mike. And honestly, he's very similar to Jess. And again, a bit of bias comes in because like Jess, he does go through a character arc. He starts off as the typical jock, and you can actually argue that a lot of the events of this game happen because of him, because he's part of the prank that upsets Hannah. She goes and dies a year later, they're all brought back. And, you know, he does, he does jump scare people, he does give off this sort of cocky vibe um, that me personally, I don't like in a person too much you know i think in in manageable amounts sure but where he pips the others in the list for me is that he does go through a change he does turn into this sort of action orientated person where he's going out there killing wendigos he doesn't think for his own safety when jess is in danger he goes out and runs after her you know, he's, he's sort of like the badass with like the, the rifle and the shotgun. Even at the end, you could say that he's kind of a, uh, a sacrificial lamb. I mean, he was in my playthrough anyway, because he does the thing with the light bulb and he can, you know, use the lighter as well if Sam runs out early. So, yeah, he sits pretty much slap bang in the middle of this list for me. Now... She was a difficult one to place. She could easily be lower in this list for me. It really depends on where you sit with her because I know a lot of people watching this, they'll be like, oh, but she's got this sort of hidden dark side where she can hold information from the group. She can get Chris killed. And you know what? She did do that in my gameplay. She did get Chris killed, essentially. Um, but again, on the flip side, you could almost say... <laughs> As, as extreme as it is to not open the door and let someone die, you got to think from her perspective that her boyfriend-to-be, if you can call Chris that, was willing to shoot her in the head, you know. So can you blame her? I know it's a, it's a very moral grey area, um, but, you know, there are going to be Ashley defenders. I'm not necessarily one of them because she does sit somewhere like middle in this list. But... When I think of Ashley, I think of the typical shy girl and she's she's got a personality that if I was around, I would naturally want to almost nurture and see what else she had to offer. Because that's the thing with like shy people, you take a little while to get to know them. And I think that's where I sit with Ashley. Plus as well, she does show that she does have a conscience. When she's in the basement with Chris, and they see the, I think it's like a film reel. They see the doll's house and she starts to clock on that it's someone that's got an agenda against, you know, the whole prank with Hannah. And she is very sorry for the, you know, the part that she played in that. So for me, it's, it's close, but I think the pros ever so slightly outweigh the cons for me, but I imagine that could be a controversial choice. So, I know you don't really get to play as Matt a lot in this guy, but 
again, it's the it's it's the nice guy thing, right? He's trying to be a good boyfriend to Emily. Obviously, he's made a poor choice, in my opinion. And there is that section in the game, and I mentioned this in the podcast, where he sees that Emily's met Mike. And my instinct, because I could see that Matt was being positioned as like the pushover, the the not quite good enough guy, my instinct is to go in there and defend him and to confront Mike because I'm like, no, come on, Matt, like stand your ground. Like, don't let this jock run the show. Don't let this girl walk all over you. So I'm naturally going to be more defensive of Matt. Of course, as well, there's the whole tower sequence. So Emily could quite easily fall to her death. He knows that Emily has not necessarily betrayed him or, you know, done anything like cheated on him, but he knows that she's being dishonest to her, but he still has an opportunity to save her. And I know in my playthrough, I did go to save her. And then there's the second choice as to whether you go to save her again or you jump to safety. And I did choose to jump to safety and ultimately that's why I think Matt survived in my playthrough. So yeah, that's why he's my number three pick. Number two, Sam. So it's funny because when you go back and go back through Until Dawn, obviously you have the sequence at the beginning with Sam, but you really don't see too much of her again until chapter five, where she's getting chased by the psycho. So she is not as much in the game as I've thought. And considering that she's on, you know, the front cover as well and you know, she's sort of like the figurehead of this game. You'd think that she'd be in it a little bit more. Having said that, if I'm just judging her as a character, she seems very level-headed. She's comp competent. She's an excellent climber. She's confident. But she's not, she's not bitchy. And this is why I put her ahead of the likes of Emily and Jess. She's got that sort of down-to-earth quality that... I personally like in you know individuals and, and friends so for me she just represents the most well-rounded and mature of all the characters the only negative that you could give to Sam is probably in the credit sequence where she encourages like the cops to go down into the the cave or the soldiers um, but again like in my playthrough Josh didn't become a Wendigo so I suppose if they did go down there, they would have been all right anyway. So it just, it's just choices at the end of the day. So as you've worked out, Chris is my favorite character or the character that I would most like to hang around out of Until Dawn. And it's because, I mean, he's one of the first that you meet so potentially a bit of bias there generally likeable you know a bit of a dork like i don't think he pretends to be anything more than what he is i think he goes through a lot he's kind of a hopeless romantic which i think you know some guys can identify with you know you want to tell the girl you want to but you know it, it's just not happening for you he's obviously responsible josh trusts him to go into the house to you know initially get sort of the lights on and let everybody in and stuff and I think he's just a, a semi-dependable figure or at least he was until I got him to shoot Ashley in the head but that's that's uh, that's that's my choice and he's also got a bit of banter as well you know when he sort of dresses up as the monk and he jump scares so he's not he's not a plain Jane but he he isn't the other extreme either he sits somewhere slightly in the middle and I think that almost is the reason why he's number one because I think the other characters typically go to slightly more either end of the spectrum. I think Chris maybe sits in the middle a little bit more. So yeah, that's my list. Obviously, this is subjective and honest to God, if this list was based on how well written these characters are and it didn't have any of my personal biases on personality 
while this list would change, it would probably flip on its head by some way, like Josh would be number one, because I think Josh is the best well-written character. I think Emily's also a very well-written character. So it's just, you know, it is just one of those things. It's, it's personal taste, but obviously let me know what you guys think on that list. Do you agree, disagree? And obviously we all know that my list is right and my list is the best. But you know, go and watch Liam and Anya's list as well. Go and humour them for me. And uh, yeah, give a little like and comment as well. Brilliant stuff, mate. I like that. That was good. No, that was an awesome video. And uh, yeah, it was really interesting to see that because I had yet to see, you know, hear what Jack would have put for his list. And obviously, you know, I think... It I had to pick someone to have a beer with as well. I'd probably agree with you, actually. I reckon, although I put Jess first in my list, if I was having a beer with someone, it would have to be Chris as well. So, yeah, no, very good. A lot of solid points there as well. So, yeah, um, thank you for tuning in, guys. Obviously, you know, the recording the whole Until Dawn series was an absolute blast, and we just wanted to top it with a few ranked videos for which characters we like, since that seems to be quite a controversial and, you know, dividing topic. So yeah, we hope you enjoyed that. Uh, so before we leave, just be sure to, you know, pop over on June the 10th where the quarry's being released. I will be doing uh, a blind playthrough, a non-commentary, and it will be an 80s ghoul fest playthrough. So maybe if, you know, you do your normal playthroughs or something, you know, feel free to pop over and see mine to see what the 80s version looks like and how it looks with a lot more splattered blood effects. So yeah, uh, thank you very much guys and we'll see you in the next one. You take care. Bye bye.